thanks, thanks, Kevin. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the third project. Uh, and again, let me express my thanks to David and, and Dell Technologies to uh, provide the funding for this project. Um, we are uh, using the most recent version of Transmart, Transmart 19 uh, for the project and are, are loading uh, data sets um, to, to, uh, from COVID and related viruses. And we think this is a, a, another uh, important um, project that, that really uh, will help the community. Uh, it's a, a collaborative project between the foundation and Axiomedics, where Axiomedics is really taking the lead here. Uh, and let me uh, introduce Peter Rice, who's uh, doing the bulk of the work and has, uh, will present. Um, just a quick note that this is one of the posters in the poster session. We have 11 posters, so if you have time, go visit the Slack channel and you can see the posters. Peter? The project I'm working on with, uh, through Axiomedics, uh, our goal is to collect uh, gene expression data from uh, COVID-19, from sort of SARS-CoV-2 virus and from related coronaviruses um, to gather up the information, make it available so that everybody can share the curated data, comment on it, help with the recuration. So we're funded through the, the Dell project. Um, core team is, is Keith Elliston, and Rudy Potenzone as the co-PIs. They should be familiar to everyone who knows the foundation's history. And I've been with the foundation for, well, since the, the Transport Foundation was formed as well. Uh, Semi Temujin is our scientific medical advisor on the, the clinical and scientific content of the data. Uh, so we're developing a public resource to accelerate uh, translational research on um, COVID-19. We're curating studies and we're going to put them up into a public transport server and a related server documenting the data and what you can do with it. Solicit contributions from the wider community to come and explore our data and to uh, contribute their own data. If anyone has expression data they'd like to put in, I would guess a lot of it's going to go via geo anyway. And we're planning to host a datathon to get help on uh, curating the data and finding other ways to make use of it. So this is our, our current count for the number of studies. The SARS-CoV-2 studies have been growing rapidly. Uh, we currently have 18 in our list. There are 40 for the, the earlier SARS-CoV from uh, earlier in the century and 27 for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. We also collect other coronaviruses that might be of interest. Uh, so there are a few other coronaviruses of, that could have related features and we just keep a watch on those. And related studies, there's just one so far. Um, a lot of the research on these respiratory viruses in ferrets. And so there is a study on healthy ferrets for comparison. And we couldn't think we're better to stick it than as a related study. So these are the, the 18 SARS-CoV-2 studies that are currently the focus of curation. Um, you'll see there are a, a range of species there. Most of these are RNA-seq studies, which in terms of geo means you have to go and find out where the data's gone because data is loaded up in three or four different formats. And uh, it can be a little bit tricky working out what's going on. It doesn't have platforms as we're ex used to for expression data because that's just the sequencing platform. So you have to generate one for whatever identifiers are being used. A uh, couple of those studies are particularly tricky. One of them that says human, mouse and macaque is actually, they say eight studies, I think it's maybe 10, all put together in one file and trying to pull them back out again and sort out what's going on is not easy because these are all recent and they're all unpublished. So you don't have a paper to help guide you. Uh, so we're working through those and building them up. And uh, when the server goes public, we will have a curated version of the uh, RNA-seq data, but quite happy to recurate it. One of the nice things in Transport 19 is ETL is much faster. So reloading a study is not a great problem. The SARS-CoV studies are much nicer. You see it says expression all the way down and in geo, that means the data just falls out. And I'm quite looking forward to curating those because they should be much simpler to do. Though you never know what complexities you might find when you look into the data. Uh, and we also have the MERS studies, which are a bit of a mixture. This is really just the time that the studies were done. The move from expression data to RNA-seq data was going on. And so we'll set up a, 
the project server it'll be running Transmart 19. We expect we're going to make some extensions to that to add analysis options and find ways to make the, the data look nicer. There'll be a public server with access to all the curated studies and they'll be available for anyone to download and use. These addresses aren't up yet, but they'll be the addresses we'll use when we have the, the servers available. We'll have a staging server at Axiomedics that we'll use while we're curating and exploring the, the data and a public server when we've agreed on good ways to curate each study. Uh, the library server will also have some information on how to how to use the data and what to expect to find in it. We have links to other COVID-19 resources. So there are resources for clinical data, for protein structure and many others. And we'll link to them and I expect they'll link to us. And we need to add documentation for new users because people new to Transmart can be given a guide to how to get what they want from the server and then how to install their own. So if you want to get involved, we could do with some help in curation of content. We're planning to have a datathon uh, later on in the summer. We'll get people together. We did one for uh, neurological diseases for Transmart uh, a few years ago, and that was uh, really successful. So we hope we can do that probably virtually. Uh, any unpublished data that you have, we would very much like to be able to include. Uh, Peter, Peter, we yeah. have a question on the yes. line and it says, would I be able to load clinical data into an I2B2 1.7.12 schema using Transmart ETL or Transmart batch? Uh, yes. So you could load the data into, we, we're aiming that you could load the data into Transmart and be able to use it in I2B2. That's part of the I2B2 Transmart project, which I'm also involved in. Um, there is an issue of how Transmart represents it and how I2B2 represents it and just cleaning up some of those little glitches. But from Transmart 19, the schema is identical. And so that's given me the odd headache. I'm not allowed to use long subject IDs in Transmart anymore because they'd get too long for I2B2 without extending a column. But you can always make up a shorter ID, so that's not too much extra work. Um, one of the things you find in Transmart is that I'm presenting data here that comes from ferrets and monkey cells and so you don't actually get clinical data for some of these Transmart trials. Um, but where it's where it's human clinical data it would be very nice if we could see the same data in both. Okay so anyone who can help with evaluating and testing the curated data we would very much like you to to take a look at the server and give us some feedback and there'll be please interact through the poster session as well because this is not only an experimental poster session for this conference but i'm going to another conference in a few weeks and i've promised i'll give them feedback on how well that session works okay so we have the project kickoff we've got the initial deployment going on at the moment we'll have a a server up later this month with the initial data sets that should be I would guess the, the um, SARS-CoV-2 and I think the SARS-CoV studies will not be too difficult to, to do and as much as we can do with the MERS ones. Carry on releasing data through July and then we'll be ready to look at having a virtual datathon for recurating the data and finding good uses for it and new ways to analyze it later on in the summer. Okay thank you I think I've put everyone on the slides I used uh, Keith's slides so I've added into his acknowledgements. Looks good. Looks good <laughs> he was <here>. missing. <laughs> Would be a shame to leave him off. Thank you. Thank you, Peter and, and Griffin. That was really terrific. I, I'm really excited about these um, these projects moving forward.